Hello everyone. Hello. Hey Stephanie, how you doing? Hey Jeremy, how you doing? Hey Julia. Blessings. Um, go ahead and share the broadcast with somebody today. I just want to come on in uh, for a few minutes of a discussion with you briefly. So go ahead, share the broadcast. I'm going to be um, talking to you or having a discussion with you today on uh, discovering uh, your calling. Amen. Discovering your calling. So come on in. Come on in and invite somebody. <laughs> Go ahead, share the broadcast for me. Share the broadcast. Share the broadcast. <laughs> Come on in. Share the broadcast with somebody. Amen. Share the broadcast. Just waiting for a few moments for you to go ahead and share the broadcast with somebody. Amen. Just going to give you about a minute to share the broadcast. I believe that this is going to change somebody's life today. <coughs> Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Hey, Nelson, how you doing? So good to see you. Go ahead, share the broadcast. Come on in today. I just want to have a discussion with you briefly on uh, discovering your calling or discovering your purpose. Amen. Discovering your calling. And, and it's just a few uh, steps that I want to share with you reference to uh, discovering your purpose. Amen. Blessings to all. Blessings to all. Good to see you. Good to see all of you. Thank you for sharing. I really appreciate it. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for sharing. So today, if you if 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 you have noticed, I have titled this session uh, "Discovering Your Calling." Amen. Discovering your calling. And today, I just want to have a brief discussion with you, and I just want to um share with you four, uh, well, actually three steps on discovering your uh purpose this um discovering your calling uh for many of us we are in church or we are in the body of christ or or for us that are living in daily life uh god has called us or he has placed a purpose on the inside of us amen hey bestie how you doing um hey bradley how you doing Thank you so much. I received that, Bradley. I received that. Uh, thank you for sharing, Bestie. Love you. But today, I just want to discuss uh, a topic with you, which is called discovering your calling, amen, or discovering your purpose. For many people, um, I get a lot of questions. I got a lot of questions, woman of God. How did you begin to walk into your purpose? How did you begin to discover your purpose? How did you know uh, which area God was calling you to go in? Uh, how did you know which part of the body that God was trying to place you in how did you know these stuff and today I just want to come on in and just share some stuff with you that I've learned throughout the years that I've learned throughout my experience amen uh, blessings Bradley that's good um, some things that I've learned throughout my experience and my journey and I just want to share a few things with you and then I did some studying right before I came on so I just wanted to come and I wanted to lay a foundation and I wanted to give you uh, some uh, steps or some things or some guidelines to go by when you want to go uh, uh, discovering what is your purpose. Amen. Thank you, Nelson. What is your purpose? And, and, and go ahead, share the broadcast. Once you've shared it, type share on the screen so that I can thank you. Um, so listen here. Um, many people are wondering what their purpose is. What are the, what, what, what is their calling or what it is that God has called them to do in the body of Christ or what it is that God has placed them on the earth for what is their calling what God want me to do and plenty of people say woman of God plenty of people usually say mother I don't know what my calling is I don't know what it is that God want me to do with my life and for many people they're going about their daily lives they're going about their lives and for many people they are lost or they feel stuck because they don't know what it is that God want them to do they don't know the next step to take they don't know uh, uh, which way to turn they just sort of feel stuck in the moment or in 
the present in their present situation. But I want to tell you and I want to inform you today and I'm going to slow down so that I can teach this thing. Uh, I want to tell you and I want to inform you today that God placed a purpose on the inside of you. When he created you, he created you even before the foundation of this world. He already created you. He knew you. He already placed a purpose on the inside of you. He already placed a set of gifts on the inside of you. So uh, 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 you are not here just to waste time. You are you weren't a mistake. You're not here uh, despite what happened to you, despite what happened to you in your past, despite what you are going through you are not a mistake the things that you went through uh, did not cover or did not uh, 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 cause you to be able to shut up or to shut up the gifts in you but the things that you went through in actuality was to bring out the gift in you yes all of the things that you went through yes that bad breakup yes that divorce yes uh, uh, all of the things you went through although it was painful you might be walking through a situation right now and you might say woman of God what I'm going through right now I don't understand Understand? How can you say that this will birth purpose or it will birth uh, 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 my purpose? How can it birth my calling? Woman of God, man of God, I'm here to tell you, hey, Wendy, how you doing? I'm here to tell you today that uh, the things that you are going through, they shape and they mold the person or they shape and they mold your character. They shape and they mold you into the person that God will have you to be. So no matter if it is good, no matter if, if it is good, all things work together for good. Amen. All things work together for good. So therefore, no matter what you went through, no matter what you are going through now, God has called you for such a time as this. He has called you for a purpose. He has called you so that you may begin to walk into your destiny. Amen. So today I just want to go ahead and talk to you. Yes, all of the tests, all of all of the things that you went through, Wendy, it was for a reason. Amen. And for many of us, the things that we went through was only for our testimony. Amen. The things that we went through was only only just for uh, somebody else. Most of the time we go through things and I didn't even meant to go here, man. Most of the time we go through things and it is not just for us, but it is just for us to help deliver somebody else or help somebody else to climb the mountain. Amen. Sometimes we go through a valley situation, but the, the, it wasn't just for us. The experience was for you to be able to help somebody out of the valley. Amen. So today I want to give you these three steps. Amen. I want to give you these three steps and if you have a notepad but you go ahead and write these steps down or you can go ahead follow along with me and there's three steps that I want to share with you. Amen. There's three steps that I want to share with you today when it comes to discovering your calling. Amen. When it comes to discovering your calling. And and, 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 and this, I have some notes here and I want to go by my notes. So I'm not going to try to rush ahead and try to get it too excited. But I want to stay. Uh, I, I want to stay as close as possible to my notes. Amen. Uh, the church is full of people. Amen. Who are anxious to hear from God. The church is full of people that is anxious anxious to hear from God. But hearing from God and following through on what God says to you is two different things. Amen. Uh, people of God, uh, 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 there are a lot of people that is in the church, in the body of Christ. And, and I don't mean church as in the building, you know, I mean us as in people in general. There are a lot of us, we are anxious to hear from God, to know what it is that he is saying to us in this season, reference to our purpose and reference to our future. Amen. Uh, but hearing God's voice or hearing God or instruction based on what he want us to do uh, 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 in our future or based on our calling, uh, hearing God's voice and following through with what he want us to do is two different things. It is easy to hear God's purpose. It is easy to hear God's will. It is easy to hear God's instructions now, but are you willing to go through the process or willing to go through the work that it would take in order for you to walk into your destiny? Amen. In order for you to discover your purpose on this planet, in order for you to discover what it is that God has been, uh, 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 is God is saying to you in this uh, uh, season, or what it is that God placed you on this earth to do, uh, uh, are you willing to go through the process? Amen. Yes, it is easy for somebody to say, God called you to be a minister, or God called you to be an artist, or God called you to be a singer, God called you to be uh, an actress. It is easy. That part is very easy. But following 
through is very difficult because once you've discovered what it is that God has tell you to do or once God has given you an instructions or uh, an instruction are you willing now to go through the process are you willing now to walk that line in order to get to the other side amen uh, are you willing now uh, uh, to go through the process amen so yes hearing from God and, and following through with what he says to you is two different things amen is two different things well, the first step that I want to give you this afternoon the first step that I want to give you this afternoon is this Number one, amen. Number one is before you can understand who you are, you must understand, you must have an understanding or a revelation of, of who God is. Let me read that for you one more time. Step one, this is step one in discovering your purpose, amen. This is step one in discovering your uh, calling, amen. And this is not just for the kingdom, this is not just for the body of Christ, but this is for daily life. This is for everyday life, amen. Uh, this is for everyday life. Uh, before you can understand who you are as a person, before you can understand who you are, you must must have an understanding or a revelation of who God is. Amen. Somebody get this in their spirit today. How can you understand who you are completely when you are not? Uh, 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 it's just like uh, God is the creator and you are the creation. In order for you to understand what it is that God has called you to, in order for you to understand your purpose now, you must now go back to the source. You must now go back to the creator. Uh, uh, have you ever seen a person that created or, 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 or a person that, uh, how, how do you say it a person that own a car or a person that uh, manufactures a car or manufactures Ford in order for you to understand how to fix Ford or in order for you to understand how to fix a problem when it comes to that vehicle you have to now refer back to the manual you have to now go back to the owner you have to go back to the person that created that thing in order for you to understand how to fix that thing in order for you to understand how that car functions in order for you to understand how that car functions and what is the purpose of that car you have to go back to the manual going back to the manual mean now that you are going back to the mind of the person who created that vehicle man that is good that's for somebody today you have to get back to the mind going back to the manual means that you're going back to the mind of the person who created the vehicle share the broadcast with somebody if you haven't as yet you're going back now to the mind of the person who created the vehicle so in order now for you to understand the vehicle and how it functions and how it works and how for you to uh, 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 keep it running smoothly, you have to go back to the manual. So therefore now, if you need to understand or if you want to know what is your purpose and you want to understand what is your calling, you will now have to refer back to the manual. My God, this is for somebody. You have to refer back to the manual and the manual here is the word of God. Amen. So you now have to, in order for you to understand amen uh, uh, your purpose in order for you to understand your calling you have to refer back to the manual amen you have to refer back to the manual which is the word of God amen and when you refer back to the word of God you are now you are now digging in into the mind of God or to the mind of the uh, of the creation amen this is the creator now for you to understand what your purpose is you have to now get back to the manual and when you are in the manual the manual is basically I'm saying that you are reaching or you are reading the mind of the creator amen I hope that you can understand this so therefore now it is the mind of the creator that is in a manual that is telling you or giving you an instruction on how to carry out or how to properly um, 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 function or how to pro pro properly work this thing or how to properly care about it or, or guess what uh, uh, we are the creation of of God, amen, and he, pl and he placed us here on this earth, amen, and he placed a set of instructions in his manual, which is the word of God, amen, the word of God is the mind of God, amen, the word of God is the mind of God, so in order for you now to understand your purpose and your calling, you have to refer back to the mind of God, which is the word of God, amen, so therefore now, before you can understand your purpose and your calling, you have to understand God. 
God and you have to understand the revelation of who God is. Amen. My God, my God. And now you have to understand or, or, or get a revelation or have a revelation of who God is. And here we understand that God is the creator and we are the creation. And once you can put this into perspective now, you will be able, you will be one step closer in understanding your calling. Because now you understand now uh, 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 who you are and you understand you have a revelation of who God is now. God is the creator and you are the creation. Amen. He is the creator and you are the creation. Amen. Once you have that perspective, once you have that in your mind, you can then now have an understanding of where to go. You are now a one step closer to discovering your purpose or your calling. Amen. Uh, one thing I want to share with you. Amen. I will actually some sub um, um, topics I have underneath this one. That was uh, that was a uh, topic. That was uh, step number one. And step number one was before you can understand who you are. Before you can understand who you are, you must have an understanding or a revelation of who God is. Amen. And how do you do that? Step, um, 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 step A. Spending time with God in prayer. Amen. Spending time with God. This is one way that you can uh, 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 grow closer or get closer to your purpose or to your calling. Amen. We already understand now that God is the creator and we are the creation. Amen. In order for you to now get one step closer to your to, to your calling and to your purpose, you now have to um, um, now spend time with God. Amen. You have to spend time with the creator. Amen. You have to spend time with the creator and then be. Amen. Uh, you have to pray. Amen. You have to pray. Step one. Um, 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 this we, we are under step one, but I'm giving you some sub um, 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 titles underneath that, which is A, and I am going down all the way to D. Uh, a is spending time with God. Amen. You have to spend time with the creator in order to understand the creation. Amen. And then number uh, um, B is prayer. You have to spend time in communication with God in order for you to understand what it is that God is saying, uh, reference to your life, reference to uh, 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 your future, reference to your destiny, reference to your purpose, reference to your calling. You have to spend time with God and you have to spend time in prayer. Amen. This is where communication takes place. This is when he began to speak to you. Amen. This is when he began to speak his will to you. Amen. This is when he began to say to you, this is is what I call you to do. This is where I want you to go. I need you to take a left and not a right. Amen. So in prayer is where this is discovered. Amen. Why? Because prayer is communication between you and your creator. Prayer is communication between uh, 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 the prayer is communication between the creator and the cre and the creation. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Bradley. Thank you. Uh, 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 C is reading his word. Amen. And I think I already touched a little bit on that. And so you should understand exactly what I'm saying to you. Reading his word. Um, 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 section C is reading his word. So number one, um, 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 A is spending time with God. B is prayer. C is uh, 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 reading his word. I said to you, in order for you to understand or to know the mind of, 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 of God, you have to now go back to the manual. So you have to spend time in the word of God. Amen. You have to get in the word of God. You have to read the word. You have to immerse yourself in the word of God. Amen. In order for you to understand or to get one step closer to your purpose and your calling. And D is allowing the Spirit to fill you, um, allowing the um, Holy Spirit to fill us and to reveal truth to us. Amen. Remember now yesterday when we was talking about, uh, when we was talking about the Holy Spirit and we was talking about God uh, uh, pouring out His Spirit in the last days. We talk about how the Holy Spirit uh, uh, comes to reveal and how the Holy Spirit comes to empower and how the Holy Spirit comes to enlighten. Amen. And how the Holy Spirit brings understanding and so forth and all of that. We spoke about that last night. So here now indeed we, we're understanding that um, um, we have to allow the Holy Spirit now to fill us up one and to reveal truth to us. Amen. 
We have to allow the Holy Spirit to fill us. And not only do we have to allow the Holy Spirit to fill us. Hello, Crystal. Are you doing blessing? Hello, India. Hello, Gabrielle. Blessings. Good to see all of you. Share the broadcast if you haven't as yet. Um, Thank you for tuning in. So guess what now? We are on section D. Section D is allowing the Holy Spirit to fill us. And not only allowing the Holy Spirit to fill you now. Allow the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to you. You say that you want to know what your purpose is. You say you want to know what is your calling. You say you want to know what it is that God is saying to you in um, 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 reference to your future. You want to know what direction to go in. You want to know um, uh, uh, which part of the body God is placing you in. But you have to be open to the Holy Spirit and you have to be open to, th- to, to truth. Amen. You have to be willing to accept the truth. Amen. Because it is one thing now for God to say to you, hey, uh, uh, you say you want to be a minister, but you have to spend time in the word. You say you want to, to, to go out and heal people, but you have to first spend time in my presence. Are you willing to go through the process? Are you willing to go through what it takes in order for you to walk in your um, 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 destiny, in order to, for you to fulfill your purpose, in order for you to fulfill destiny? Are you willing to go through the process? Amen? So, so, so now you have to allow the Holy Spirit not only to fill you now, but you have to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to you. And, and the Holy Spirit revealing truth to you sometimes won't feel good, won't sound good. Why? Because we are so caught up in our flesh. We only want the things that are, 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 that feel good to us. We only want the things that feel good to our flesh. But we don't want to go through the process. Why? Because processes work. Why? Because process tend to hurt sometimes. Because it is a pulling away of things that we are so used to. It is a pulling away of old habits. It is a pulling away of things that we so um, 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 accustomed to doing that so feel so good to us. So we get to the point now where we don't want to hear truth. We don't want to, uh, to, to, to accept the truth. When God said, guess what now? You say you want to be a part of ministry. You want to be in ministry, but you need to deal with that attitude. You say you want to be in ministry, but you need to deal with the part where you don't have no love for people. You have to first love people in order to be in ministry. You said that you want to be married. You have to first know how to be a wife. You say you want to be married, but you have to first understand how to be a husband. Amen. You don't become a wife or a husband when you get married or on that day, but you are a husband or a wife before that meets you. So guess what? All of that is process. Hallelujah. All of that is process. All of that takes the Holy Spirit revealing these things to you. The Holy Spirit reveal these truths to you. Reveal these things to you. You have a nasty attitude. You don't know how to talk to people. You don't know how to share. You're selfish. These are the things that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you once you begin now to spend time with God. Once you begin to stay into prayer. This is how now you get one step closer to your purpose and to your calling. And you might say, prophetess, how is all of this going to help me to get to my purpose? If you have a nasty attitude, you're not going to make it to your purpose. Because your purpose might uh, uh, require you to work with people. Your purpose might uh, require you to spend time with other people. So if you have a nasty attitude, how are you going to Fulfill your purpose. My God, somebody get this. Somebody get this. So now the Holy Spirit reveals to you now. The Holy Spirit, hey Charmaine, how you doing? The Holy Spirit begins to reveal to you. The Holy Spirit begins to reveal to you truth. Um, 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 truth. Amen. Amen. He reveals truth to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is for somebody today. The reason why so much um, um, um so the reason why you cannot walk into your true purpose or to your true destiny, the reason why some of us can't walk in our true calling and in our true purpose and our true destiny is because when you get to know uh, is because uh, uh we so stuck in our own ways, we don't want to do it God's way, and when He gives us the instructions, we don't want to follow it. When He says to go left, you going right, when He says to go right, you going left, you don't want to crucify your flesh, but yet you you saying, God, what is my purpose? What is my calling? My God, my God. And the reason why some of us, we can't walk in destiny and we can't walk in our purpose is because we are not willing to crucify our flesh. We're not willing to put our feelings aside. We're not willing to put our own agenda aside. We're not willing to put our own will aside for God's will. My God, my God, my God. 
We're not willing to make the change. We're not willing to go through the process. So this is the reason why you find many of us now, we've been going to church for 10 years. We've been going to church for three years, five years, and we still don't know where we fit into the ministry. We still ain't doing not a thing in church. We're not in ministry. We just come. We, we, we get a word. We get sweaty. We roll all over the ground. We speak in tongues, and then we walk over to church with an elephant on our back. No healing take place. No revelation take place. No change take place. Why? Because uh, uh, we are not moving. Why? Because we stuck in our own ways. We stuck in our own selfish attitude. We stuck in our own way. And you trying to figure out why is there no change in my life? The reason why there's no change in your life is because you're not you're not making a step towards change. You're not willing to to depart with your flesh. You're not willing to part with what makes you feel good. Process don't always feel good, and therefore some of us we don't want to go through the process because it don't feel good. So well, you know what we say to hell with process. Let me find the easy way. Microwave generation. Let me find an easier way to get to this point here. We need to get across to that river over there. And, and guess what? Let me find an easy way to get going. God say swim, but no, there's a boat over there. I think I can take the boat. And for many of you, you go and you take the boat. And when you reach the middle of the river, you sink. And then now you want to call on God. But he told you to swim. People of God. We have to get to the point where if we want to know our true calling, if we want to walk into purpose, if we want to walk into our destiny, we have to be willing to crucify our flesh. Amen. We have to be willing to crucify our flesh. And another reason why uh, you have to understand that when you begin to walk, when you want to walk in your purpose and into your true calling, uh, you need to begin to spend time with God. When you spend time with God, he begins to change you. My God, my God, the reason why you can't walk in your purpose or you can't walk in your calling being the same old man that you are is because now your flesh is dictating to you. But when you begin to spend time with God, your flesh is no longer dictating to you. It is now the will of God that is speaking or dictating to you now. So now when you're spending time with God, when you are in constant communication with God now, he changes you. You are not that old man anymore. More the old man dead, and you are now a new create cre creature in God. Amen. You are now a new creation. You now take on a new mindset. So now, when you was trying to walk into purpose, or you was trying to figure out your purpose while you were still the old man, now you 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 give your life to Christ. You begin to make my um uh, uh, um lifestyle changes. You begin to renew your mind, and when you begin to renew your mind, now you're spending time with God. You're spending intimate time with God. So now you're becoming a new creature. You. Be you, you become a new person. You are born again. You become a new person. So therefore now the old plans that you had, you find out now that that old plan ain't working out for you anymore. Why? Because that was plans for the old person. That was plans for the old person. So now you stepped into this new person. You've renewed your mind now. So now you're spending time in communication with God. You become a new creation. You become a new person in God. So now when he begins to change, when, when, when you, when you spend spend time with God, you begin to change. You realize now that your attitude begins to change. You begin to love people. You begin to love to talk to people. You realize now that, yeah, I might be a little shy, but when the Holy Spirit come over, there's a spirit of boldness that comes. You realize now that you begin to change. The same old places you used to go, you don't go there anymore. The same old things that you used to do, you don't do them anymore. Why? Because you're not the old man anymore. The old man is dead. You're now a new creature. So now when you begin to walk in the purpose and calling, you're walking into your purpose and your calling as a new creature, as a new person with a new mindset, a reform mindset. My God, somebody get this today. Hallelujah. So, 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 so now when you want to uh, walk into destiny, you have to allow yourself to die to your flesh. In order for you to understand your purpose and your calling, you have to die to your flesh because uh, uh, it is not in your will, but it's God's will. Amen. It is not your will, but it's God's will. So you have to die to your flesh. Amen. You have to die to, the, to your flesh. The old you no longer exists. You become a, you, the old you no longer exists. You crucify that. Uh, you crucify your flesh. The old you is dead. Uh, uh, when Christ died, that old flesh, that old you, when you become born again, died and when, uh, 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 died at uh, the same time Christ died. And when he rise, you rise and become a new creation. 
a new creature. So therefore, now you begin to walk into your purpose. You begin to walk into your destiny. Amen. You become a different person. And so guess what? The old you no longer exists. Amen. You begin now to mirror the image of God. My God, this is so good. You now, you, you become the reflection of God. Woo! Who wants to become the reflection of God? My God, my God, my God. I want to become the reflection of God. My God. I want to mirror my big brother, um, um, Jesus. The same things that he did. The same things. The same way he performed miracles. The same way that he delivered people. The same way that he set people free from um, 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 demons and, and, and cast out demons. The same way that he healed the sick. The same way that he was able to love his enemies. The same way that he was able to love people. I want to be the reflection of Christ. I want to be the opinion. I want to be, uh, I want to mirror Christ in exactly everything that he did. So now the old you has died and now you are a reflection of God. My God, my God. The old you has died and now you have become, you are now the reflection of God. Hallelujah. Somebody get this in their spirit. You're no longer that old person that would have cussed out somebody in a hot second. You're no longer that person that, 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 that would sit down and allow somebody to take advantage of you. You're no longer that person now that would allow somebody to prostitute your guests. Amen. But you are um, the old you died and you become a new person. And when you become that new person now, you are a reflection of Christ. And if you are a reflection of Christ, if you are the reflection of God, you are now exuding. You are now mirroring the thing or the image of God. My God, my God. My God, my God. Hallelujah. So you got to you you got to die to your flesh in order for you to fulfill your purpose or your destiny. Amen. If you want to know your true calling, if you know want to know what it is that God is birthing on the inside of you, you got to die to your flesh. Amen. It won't feel good, Shaman. Dana, it won't feel good. Process don't feel good, Gabrielle. It won't feel good. Why? Because you're crucifying some, but something. Some of us were 33 years old, not 29 years old, 26 years old, 22 years old. You're 45 years old. You're 55 years old. And all you know is this. All you know how to please is your flesh. So now for, for you now to try to separate your flesh now for you to now try to separate what feels good to you in order for you now to kill this flesh now in order to be led and to follow another way or to, 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 to be led by Christ now it don't always feel good for you now to be born again and to be a new creature and say, you know what? I'm going to be celibate. You know what? I'm not going to have sex out of wedlock anymore. You know what? I'm not going to drink liquor anymore. You know what? I'm not going to the club anymore. You know what? I'm not going to dance and move my body in that type of way anymore because it wasn't glorifying God. I'm no longer going to be the one that is dating a married man. I'm no longer going to be the one that is dating a married woman. Sometimes it was so good to our flesh. It feels so good, but it was not right to our spirit. It was killing us spiritually. So now you are a new creature and you reflect in the very image of God. You can't be doing, you can't do the same old things. So now you have to allow yourself to be led. Hallelujah. The flesh will allow you to fall for every time. My God, my God, Thomas. So now step number two, I'm moving on to step number two. Amen. This brings us to step number two. It don't feel good, Dana. It don't feel good for you now to be all up in the world. Uh, uh, you know what it is to have sex every night. You know what it is to go to, to the club every night. You know what it is to be doing the dirty wine. And all of a sudden now you get saved and the Holy Spirit is telling you, no, you can't drop it like it's hot anymore. No, you can't have sex anymore. Out of wedlock, that is. No, you can't. Uh, no, you can't do it like that anymore. What? What, Holy Spirit? You mean I can't listen to them type of music anymore? You mean I can't watch that anymore? You mean I can't go over there anymore? No, because you became a new creature. You are. That's right, Pauline. You are now a new creature. You are now a new creature in God. So now you become the mirror of God. The things that he hate, you, be, you now begin to hate. The things that he loved, you now begin to love. 
Hallelujah. This is for somebody today. So, so, so point number two. This brings us to point number two. Hallelujah. Let's move on because I don't want to be too long. Point number two is allow yourself to be a follower. My God, my God, we're getting one step closer uh, 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 to, to discovering our, our, our purpose, amen, or discovering our calling. Step number two is allow yourself to be a follower. My God, you know, some of us, we don't like to be followers. We won't be the leader. My God, my God, we won't be the leader. We won't be the one to dictate to people. We won't be the one to tell people what to do and what not to do. Amen. But in order for you to, 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 to understand your purpose and your calling, you have to allow yourself to be led by the spirit of the living God. Amen. Allow God to lead you by his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to allow God to lead you by his Holy Spirit. Remember now, we're going back to exactly what I taught last night. The Holy Spirit is a revealer. The Holy Spirit empowers you. The Holy Spirit enlightens you. So guess what now? You have to allow yourself to be led by God. You have to allow yourself now to be led by the Holy Spirit. Hello, Agnes. How you doing? So good to see you, woman of God. You have to step through is you have to allow yourself to be led by the spirit of God. You are getting one step closer to your calling, one step closer to your um, purpose in order for you to hear the mind of God concerning your future, concerning your purpose and concerning your calling. You have to allow yourself to be led by the Holy Spirit. God is telling you, I don't want you here. I want you over there. There's a reason why he does not want you there, but he wants you over here. It's probably because the blessings is this way and not that way. My God, my God, somebody. You got to understand, some of us, we have to go through certain things in order for us to walk into our destiny. The road may not be uh, uh, easy. It may be bumpy. There are some things that you may have to go through. But there, it's a reason why you have to go through it. Why you may um, um, have to be in the future. You may have to be the leader of a woman's ministry. If you never get your heart broken before, if you ain't never been cheated on before, if somebody ain't never leave you before, how in the world now you're going to lead a woman ministry? How are you now going to minister to women with broken heart how are you now going to minister to a woman who just get kicked down by her husband just get knocked in her head by her boyfriend how are you going to minister to her now if you never went through the situation and even if you did not go through the situation now if you did not allow the holy spirit to lead you now for you to be able to get the revelation and the knowledge of that thing how are you going to speak to a sister that went through something let me just stick a pen inside of it. You, you don't always have to go through something in order to help deliver somebody, you know. You don't always have to go through it. You, just the mere fact that you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will, 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 will bring revelation to that thing. The Holy Spirit will reveal certain things to you. You don't necessarily have to walk through something. But when you walk through something now, you gain empathy and sympathy. But most of the time now, if you've never been through a situation, a young girl tell come up to you and say, guess what? I was raped. you never been raped before. You ain't know what to say to this Holy Spirit. But because you ain't know what to say to this young lady. But because of the Holy Spirit in you now, he will reveal some things. He will enlighten you. He will empower you with the right words to say to this young lady. You ain't never been raped before. You, ain't no, you, you never experienced that before. So you don't know what she's going through. You don't know what she's feeling. You don't know what she's thinking. But the Holy Spirit empowers you. So if you're not willing to be led by the Spirit of God, you are, you, come on, you're setting yourself up uh, 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 for failure. We got to move one step closer. We're moving one step closer to your purpose and to your calling. And to move a step further to your purpose and your calling, you got to be able now to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen? You got to be led by the Spirit of God. Once you sense God leading you into your uh, specific purpose, amen? Once you sense God is leading you into your specific purpose, you need to learn to move in the uh, Holy Spirit, amen? To carry out that purpose. Let me read that for you one more time because I need you to... To get this in your spirit today once you sense god leading you into your pacific purpose or to your pacific um, um pacific calling you need to learn how to move in the holy spirit to carry out that person to carry out your purpose the holy spirit telling you to get up to pray but yet you saying man i i i, I want sleep 
But the Holy Spirit telling you to get up to pray because the Holy Spirit wants you to pray for Sister Agnes. The Holy Spirit wants you to go and pray for Sister Hannah. The Holy Spirit wants you to go and pray for bro Brother Thomas. But you laying down there, man, I ain't getting up. I ain't getting up. But you wake up in the morning now and you hear an accident happen and Brother Thomas was in the accident. And then you can say, oh, the Holy Spirit tell me to wake up. The devil is a liar. Come on, man. Once you sense God pushing you or leading to you, leading you to your purpose, your purpose might be to be an intercessor. So God is trying to wake you up through 2 o'clock in the morning to pray for Brother Thomas, but yet you laying down and you wouldn't get up to pray for Brother Thomas. But, you, but God is pushing you to your purpose. Your purpose and your calling is to be an intercessor, to pray on behalf of others. But yet he's waking you up 3 o'clock in the morning and you being disobedient. You ain't listening. You ain't getting up. And then in the morning when you hear something happen to Brother Thomas, when you hear something happen to uh, 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 the brother or the sister, then you want to hold your head and say, oh, God told me this. Oh, God. No. Don't come afterwards and say, God tell you. As a matter of fact, just shut up. I'm so sorry to say it like that. Just, just be quiet. Don't, don't say, oh, the God, the God, the God. No. That's one thing I don't like with people. You want to wait till after something happened and then talk about, oh, God told you. No, but God showed you for a reason. He either showed you so that you can pray for that person or he showed you in order for you to do something about it. So if God is leading you to your purpose now, you have to learn how to be obedient. You have to learn now how to be a, 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 a good follower. You have to learn now how to be led by the Spirit of God. So when he's waking you up in the 3 o'clock in the morning to pray for somebody, get up and pray. If he's leading you now to sow into the life of somebody, go and sow in that person's life. You never know what you do. That person might have just eat their last noodles. But yet you said, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what God called me to do. I've been going to church for five years now and I don't know what to do. But yet the pastor been calling for somebody to, 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 to take up the usher position from that time. You ain't want to do that. You ain't want to do that because you feel that's too little for you. You ain't, you ain't want that. You want to hold somebody, Mike. But that is the journey to your purpose. I remember I used to, I used to, I used to clean the toilets. I used to clean the toilets, and I did that with grace. I did that with grace. I was the usher, seating people, and I did that with grace. Sometimes I used to come to church with a headache. I mean, I mean, when I say headache, I mean a headache. And all that drum and all that music and all that, guess what? I still praising God. I still seating people. I still doing what I, I working like I working unto God because I'm not working for man. man. I was not working for man. I did that with grace. I scrubbed the toilets with grace. On Saturdays, I would go and I would ask pastor for the key and I would go to the church and I would clean up. Go and sweep the church. Go and mop out the church. Rearrange the chairs. Ain't nobody paying me for that. But there's, there's, it was a journey that I had to take. And plenty of people, they, they have the nerves now to look at me and say, where she come from? It, it, it all was a journey. It was a journey. People have the nerve to look at you. Who she come from? She's just a, a Facebook prophet. Well, by, uh, well, well, listen, if I'm a Facebook prophet, then let me stay right here on Facebook and be a Facebook prophet. Instead of being on somebody's pulpit and, 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 and just uh, trying to, 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 to be manipulated by somebody. Let me stay right here on, on Facebook and being a Facebook prophet then. I mean, you have the nerve now to, 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 to be on your pulpit and talk about, oh, I'm, I'm your Facebook prophets. You don't know my purpose. You don't know my journey. You don't know what I went through. You don't know the sleepless nights. You don't know what I went through. You don't know. You don't know the pain. You don't know the hurt. You don't know the humiliation. You don't know the persecution. You don't know what I went through. And guess what, people? It ain't finished yet. For this little thing that I do in here on Facebook, this little thing that I do on Facebook, I mean the demons and the warlocks and the witches that trying to shut me up. Man, listen, I didn't come on Facebook for this. The people that are trying to kill me just for this. I ain't getting paid to come on Facebook. Some of y'all, when y'all say y'all can sow a um, um, couple of dollars, you don't sow it. 
So I ain't coming on Facebook for your money. I ain't coming on Facebook for none of that. I ain't coming on Facebook because this is what God tell me to do. I had to go through the journey. I have to go through that. This is my process. This is my process. So, so listen here now. You have to go through the process. You have to be willing now to be led by the Spirit of God. And you can come around here and hold somebody mic, but you can't even listen to the Holy Spirit. And you can come around here, but you won't hold somebody mic, but yet you're walking up in church where the pants were so tight, I can see the whole V. I can see everything that your mother bless you with. As a matter of fact, I see everything what God bless you with. But yet you won't go stand up on somebody puppet and hold the mic and talk. But you was pastor so and so. You was prophet so and so. And you was this and that. Be listen here. Before people start calling me prophet, I run from this. As a matter of fact, I still running from it. You know how much times I'm wrestling with God when God say, I need you to do this. I need you to speak to this person. I need you to do that. You know how much time I'm like, God, God. You know how much time I'm battling and I'm having heart palpitation. I, I, I am my heart beating out of my chest because I don't want to come on Facebook. You know how much times I'm on Facebook and my hands sweating and I'm nervous and I don't want to come on. I running from this. But yet y'all won't hate on me because I'm on Facebook. I didn't mean to say all this, people of God. I didn't mean to say all of this. But all of it is purpose. All of it is a process. It's a process that you have to go through, Miss Harvey. It's a process you have to go through, Lundy. It's a process. Come on, people of God. In order for you to recognize your purpose, in order for you now to get to your calling, in order for you to be the prophet that God called you to be, in order for you to be the minister God called you to be, in order for, for you to be the entrepreneur God called you to be, in order for you to be the mother that God called you to be in the church, in order for you to be the father that God called you to be in the church, you had to go through some, th some things. You had to go through your process. You had to. You had to. And they have to nerve where she come from. Who she is. We can shut her down. The devil is a liar. Let me get back to the text. Let me get back to the text. When a person begins to walk in their purpose. When a person begins to walk in their true calling and their true purpose. Amen. You can expect a heavy warfare. <laughs> wow. Wow. When you begin to walk, when a person begins to walk in their true calling, when they begin to walk in their true purpose, you can expect a heavy spiritual warfare. Who this for? Who this for? I get my Pepsi. Let me take a let me take a Pepsi break. The text say, when a person begins, when Omis began, when Corinne began to walk in her purpose. Hello, is that Shania? When a person begins to walk in their true purpose and their calling, watch the warfare. So everything I just said to you, Miss Javi, when you begin to walk in your true purpose and your true calling, if you want to know if you're walking in your calling, if you want to know if you're walking into destiny, if you want to know you're walking into what God has called you to do, watch the warfare, watch the spiritual fight, watch the demons, watch the witches, watch the warlocks. Listen here, if, if the warlocks ain't fighting you, if the demons ain't fighting you, if the um, um, witches ain't coming after you, then sweetie, that ain't your calling. Step down. That ain't your calling. It, it's not your calling. If you ain't experiencing no type of fight, if everything is peach and peaches and cream, something wrong with that picture. If you're a pastor and you're telling me that you ain't never experiencing no fight, you ain't never experiencing no problems with no witches and no warlocks, something is wrong there. If you've been married for 20 years and you can tell me, oh, we never had a problem, we never had a fight, everything has been lovely, the devil is a liar. Let me don't even go there. 
Let me don't go there. If you want to know if you're walking in your true calling, if you are walking in your true calling, expect a fight. The devil is coming to fight you. Why now? Because you're walking in your purpose. You realize now that as a creation, you realize now what God placed you on this earth for. You tap into the realm of the spirit where now you understand what God has placed on inside of you. And now you're manifesting that thing. You're walking into the true calling and true the truth. You're walking into the true calling. You're walking into destiny now. Guess what? The devil will sidetrack you. The devil will try to knock you off your path. The devil will try to kill you. The devil will try to destroy you. The devil will try to steal from you. The devil will bottle with your children. The devil will begin to bottle with your friends. The devil will begin to bottle with your family. The devil will begin to bottle with your body. When you begin to walk into your true purpose and, and, and your true calling, how you want to know or if, listen, um, if you in ministry, how you want to know if you're doing this thing right, check the level of warfare. Check your level of warfare and based on your level of warfare, you know exactly if you are walking in the calling of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Expect the fight. Expect the warfare when you are walking in the true calling of God. How you know when you're walking in the true and true calling of God, the demons them start to fight you. The, the, the witches them start to fight. They start sprinkling things around your door. They start um, sprinkling things on your desk at work. They start gossiping about you. They start spreading rumors about you. How you want to know if you're walking in the true calling of God? They ask where you come from. Who you think you is. They begin to have a problem with you. You want to know if you're walking in the true calling of God. You want to know if it is your purpose. You want to know if, if, it is, if, if you're walking into destiny. Check out the level of warfare. My God, my God, my God, check out the level of warfare. And then you want, this is the reason why the true men and women of God, you realize now that they go through so much. And most of y'all, y'all just call them and say, a man of woman of God or a man of God, pray for me. But you never know the warfare that person going through to pray for you. You never know what that person is going through. You never know the fight. And all for that person to have a little church up the road with five people in it, you don't know the warfare that they're going through. And the reason why they only have five people in the church is because they're preaching truth. Woo! The reason why they only have five people in church is because they're preaching truth. They're talking about the sin. They're talking about you, sweetheart. They're talking about you sneaking from my Johnny three o'clock in the morning. So now they start to offend you. Instead of correcting it, you get upset, get offended, and you leave the church. Now that is the purpose of a purpose or a person walking in their purpose. Why? Because they are not afraid of your face. They are not afraid of what you can say about them. But they're going to give you the word of God unadulterated. They're going to tell you exactly what God say. They're walking in their purpose and they won't allow you to contaminate them. They won't allow you to manipulate them. They won't allow you to bribe them. Why? Because they're walking in their true calling. And they realize now that I have a creator that I am serving. And I am the cre to creation. And the creator plus place something on the inside of me. And, uh, and and if I do not uh, 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 allow this thing to manifest out of me, therefore now I'm going to be held liable. So therefore, if God called me as a prophet and he says, Mother, I need you to go over there and I need you to say this and that to that person. And I do not go and I do not say or do what God tell me to do. I get the punishment. I get the licking. So you think now I can get the licking for somebody? The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. So people of God, people of God, that was step two. Allow yourself to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Allow yourself to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once you sense that God is leading you in, your, in, a, in a specific um, um, direction or a specific purpose or calling, go ahead and be led by the Spirit. Amen. And then how you know that you are walking in purpose and in destiny and into the true callings, the, 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 the level of warfare intensifies. Amen. It intensifies. Um, prophetess, how do I know I'm walking in my true calling? I am in 
ministry in church. I am in this. Are you being fought? Are you it, it, are you being fought? Are, are the people in the church talking about you? Are people trying to overthrow you? Are, 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 are what's happening? Let me know what's happening. And then I can tell you whether you are in your calling or not. You want the praise team? Nobody concerned about you. Nobody talking about you. <laughs> then, sister, that probably ain't what you, where you're supposed to be. Maybe you're supposed to be doing something else. Maybe you're supposed to be evangelizing. If you ain't having no warfare, you ain't having no fight, check it. Check it. People, there's a song that says, uh, 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 dogs don't bark at park car. If you're just standing there and you ain't having no effect, ain't nothing gonna happen. But the minute you start having an effect, the minute you start walking in purpose, the minute you start walking in your calling, man, guess what? All the dogs, them start howling from a mile away. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on. My God, my God. My God, my God. Another thing I want to add in, when you are walking towards your calling and your uh, uh, purpose, you want to surround yourself with godly or like-minded people. Amen? You want to surround yourself with godly or, or like-minded people. In order, if you, have a, 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 if you want to be an entrepreneur, you can't surround yourself with people that are just sitting on the block smoking weed. Amen. If you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to own your business, you can't surround yourself by people who are just sitting around on the block smoking weed all day where you can get nowhere. You can't surround yourself by people who don't want to go anywhere. You can't surround yourself by dream killers. You can't surround yourself by people that are constantly speaking negativity into your air. Amen. I, I, I just recently the spirit of the Lord had me to, to a point where uh, I, 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 I wasn't watching TV. I wasn't communicating with um, um, friends. I wasn't communicating with people like that. And for some people, they may think that I, I was upset with them or I cut them off or I just it wasn't none of that. God said to me, he said, uh, 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 he said, I'm taking you to another level. And he said, where I'm taking you, a lot of people cannot go. He says, but once you get there, I will use you to pull some people up and then another thing he says to me he says he says he said um, uh, 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 he said how is it now that you are preaching one thing you are preaching one thing but the people that are in your immediate circle are living a different way how can you have a friend you are preaching to people and telling them to get their life together but the very one that is close to you still doing foolishness they still sweethearting they still dating married men they still doing this and they still doing that you ain't having no effect to, uh, with the people that are nearest to you how are you going to have any effect with the people that are furthest from you so in order for you to have an effect now you got to change your mentality you got to change some things that you're doing you can't hang around people that are poison po poison for you you can't hang with people that are negative you can't hang with people that are constantly are uh, polluting your mind with things it's going against what god is trying to do in your life God is right here and he taking off the dirt. He taking off the dirt. While he taking off the dirt, you shoveling the dirt right back on you. And for every time you shoveling the dirt back on you, God trying to take the dirt off. He trying to take the dirt off and you shoveling the dirt right back on you all the time. Come on, people, it's God. It's time for us to stop working backwards now. We got to stop working backwards. God trying to take the dirt off of you and you placing the dirt on you. God taking you away from the dog, but yet you're going right back there, laying with the dog. And when you catch the fleas, you want to come running back to God. Come on, people of God. It's time for us now to surround, our, surround ourselves with like-minded people. People that are positive. Somebody that will push you. Somebody that will uh, uh, encourage you. The, the people that will encourage you in the things of God. That will encourage you to go into business. The people that will speak positivity into your spirit and into your mind. Amen. The people that will say, yes, you can get the promotion. Yes, go ahead and apply. Uh, uh, yes, you can get the job. Go ahead and apply. Yes, you can go ahead and start this business. Go ahead and do it. These are the people that you want to surround yourself with. Yes, you can do the ministry. I know God is calling you to 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 to, 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 to enter ministry. Yes, you can do it. A lot of prayer and fasting. Yes, you can do it. You want to surround yourself with godly people. You want to be influenced by godly people. You don't want to ever get to the point where you're being influenced by negativity. You want to be influenced by positivity. Amen. This is the way that you begin to walk towards your calling and to your purpose. Amen. And, and, and guess what here? The, there's a bonus. 
I can throw this in. I can throw this in just for free. I said I was going to give you three three steps. Three steps. Did I reach um, um step three yet? Did I reach step three yet? I don't think I reached um, um step three yet. Amen. Step three. Step three is. <laughs> Some of y'all can like this one and some of y'all can hate this one. Step three is obedience. Amen. How do you get closer to walking into your purpose and into your calling? Obedience. Amen. Step three is obedience. Amen. Step three, and I can go over all of the steps at the end of the broadcast. Step three is obedience to the voice to the to, to, to God's voice. Obedience to the to the voice of God. Amen. And I don't think I need to go completely into that. Hey Samantha, how you doing? I don't need to go completely into that because I think basically what I've been saying is is is, is you you should understand what I was saying uh, 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 throughout the broadcast. Amen. You have to be obedient to the voice of God in order to get closer to your calling, in order for you to know your purpose, in order for you to to operate in your calling and be successful in your calling, you have to be obedient to the voice of God. Amen. You have to be obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I won't spend too much time on step three. Step three is obedience. Amen. And then I, I given you a bonus one. This is a bonus one. And, and, and I would say step four, but this is a bonus. Amen. This is a bonus. This one, this one for free. <laughs> this is a bonus. You need mentors. Amen. In order for you to discover your purpose or in order for you to discover your calling or in order for you to begin to make the steps in uh, towards your calling and your purpose, you need to have mentors. Amen. Woman of God, what you mean? I need to have mentors. You need to have mentors to guide you, to offer advice and correction with love. Amen. In order for you to walk into your purpose, in order for you to walk into your calling, in order for you to discover what it is that God is calling you to and to walk into it and to walk into it uh, 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 successfully, you need to be able to have um, uh, mentors, amen, the spiritual leadership, amen, uh, you need to have mentors, amen, and it doesn't mean that it have to be a pastor or a prophet or anybody like that, it's just somebody that will give you advice without passion, no partiality, they give you advice but with love they're not afraid to correct you they're not afraid to tell you when you are wrong they correct you but they correct you in love amen uh, so you need to have mentors you need to have somebody that will guide you somebody that will lead you uh somebody that will offer advice amen uh, 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 uh somebody that will correct you with love amen a mentor that will let you know if you are uh, a mentor that will let you know if your direction is sound and in in uh, in, uh, 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 in line with God's plan. Amen. You need to have a mentor, amen. And what your mentor does, your mentor helps to guide you. Uh, they, they, they they offer advice, um, correction, they correct you with love. And what your mentor does, amen. Your mentor lets you know if you do, if your direction or whatever it is that you're hearing from God, they try to they, they guide you, they lead you. You might be your, your your vision or your hearing might be a little distorted, and what they do, you might be going, you know, off the path a little bit. What they do is they help to keep you on the path amen they help to keep you on the path and when they noticing that you know you going little sideways they say hey, 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 hey get back on the road this is what a mentor does amen they're not afraid to let you know when you messing it up yes how can you learn without a teacher it, exactly so you need somebody now to help mentor you to help guide you to offer advice let you know when you are going um, uh, um, when you're doing it right when you're doing it wrong and to help correct you let you know um guess what you, you did this right but I, you could have do it a little better you did this okay but you could have do it a little better amen so this is what you have a mentor for amen and like i say a mentor doesn't have to be a pastor it doesn't necessarily have to be a pastor or a prophet or a prophetess. It can be somebody that, you know, somebody that you trust, somebody that loves God and respect God and is able to give correction. Amen. Without, without, um, 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 uh, 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 without, uh, no partiality. 
Amen. So this is what um, 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 mentors that will let you know if your direction is sound and in line with God's plans for your life. Amen. And, and, and guess what? It is so good if your mentor is a prophet. My God, my God. If your mentor is a prophet, they'll be able to see you from a mile away. Hallelujah. If your mentor is a man of God, and it doesn't have to be basically just a prophet, a man of God or a woman of God, and they hear from God, they're, 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 they're full of the Holy Spirit. Guess what? Your mentor now, once they have love for you, they'll be able to see you from a mile away. You don't even have to come to them for them to know that you just messed up. You just buck your toe. Amen? They'll give you a call. Hey, 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 what's going on? What's going on? I'm sensing something in the spirit and it, I, 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 we need to fix it. Amen. So you need a mentor to help guide you, to lead you uh, in the right direction. Amen. Amen. You also need another thing that you also need. You also need your pairs. Amen. You also need your pairs. And yes, I said it right. You need your pairs for your journey to keep me for your journey. You also need your pairs. Amen. You also need your pairs for the journey to keep you grounded and to keep and to remind you that you are not alone. Amen. You need your pairs to help keep you grounded. Amen. And to remind you that you are not alone. Some of us now we on this road and we on this journey to our calling and to our purpose. And sometimes we get a little high minded. We get a little, you know, we get a little big headed. Your pairs are there to remind you, to keep you grounded and to remind you, hey, 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 keep it down. You know, keep it one notch down. You ain't reach yet. <laughs> You know those friends? <laughs> and I mean godly friends now. I mean people who can drag you back down to the club and drag, drag you back to the bar. But you have pairs around you, godly um, 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 pairs that will say to you, that will keep you grounded, that, will, that won't allow you to become uh, big-headed, that won't allow you to become uh, so full of pride that you don't, you know, that you're so full of pride. Amen? So you need your pairs now to keep you grounded and to remind you that, hey, you ain't in this by yourself. I'm here with you. I'm here along with you. Amen. Uh, so that's what you need your pairs for. You need your pairs to help motivate you uh, to continue. Amen. In your journey to uh, your calling and to your purpose and to serve you as a and to serve as a wind beneath your wings. Amen. To serve as a wing beneath your wings. We talk about haters so much that we often forget that there are real friends, real, real, real friends. Amen. As Christians and as believers, we always talking about our enemies. We always talking about our haters. Guess what? We always want to put on our hater blockers. We always want I'm, I'm, I'm God to prepare a table in the midst of our enemies. We talk about enemies so much that sometimes we tend to forget that there are people that God placed in our lives. There are real friends. There are true friends that God actually places in our lives for a reason. Amen. And they serve as a wind beneath your wings. Amen. They help to motivate you. They help to push you. They help to stay. They help you to stay in alignment. They help to encourage you. They say, yes, yes, you could do it. Yes, you can do it. Go ahead. You, you have true friends. And this is one thing we have to correct in the body of Christ. This is one thing we have to correct as believers. We always think somebody out to get us. We always think that somebody is our enemy. We always think that people always have, uh, do not have our best interests at heart. But God places, actually places people in our lives that help to motivate us and help to push us and help to uh, take us to the next level in our lives. There are some people that come in our lives and all they come to do is to help uh, motivate you, to help push you and to help get you to uh, a certain level. Um, they require nothing from you. They require absolutely nothing for you. But their purpose in life is to help motivate you and push you and that is and I and I feel that is my purpose my purpose is to help people to discover their purpose I believe that's what God put me on this planet for to help other people to discover their purpose I have such a such joy uh, uh, when, when, when I have a friend and a friend, you know, like my best friend, she's been doing nails for years. And, and, and then after she's just um, developed this passion for makeup, man, I just so like encouraging her to do the, 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 the makeup. I encourage her to go and do a Facebook page. I encourage her to go and do a YouTube page. I encourage her to do the makeup. And she is awesome when it comes to makeup. 
she is awesome when it comes to makeup so it that is my passion i like to encourage people it makes me feel good to encourage people when somebody call me and say man i just get engaged i am so excited you swear think i is the one who just get engaged somebody just got mom call me and say man i pregnant i excited like it was me who was pregnant I just got married the holiday. I'm excited like it's me who got married. I am honestly excited and happy for people when they are, are, are succeeding in life. That is a gift that God put on the inside of me and I can't do nothing about it. Absolutely nothing I can do about it. My purpose is to help other people discover their purpose. Amen. That is what God placed me on this planet for. Yes, he called me to, to, to be a prophetess. Yes, that is my gift. Yes, that I know that is my gift. I try to run from it. I, I can't run from it. I know that is my calling. But my passion is to help other people to discover their purpose. Amen. And hence this teaching today. And if you discover, if you go on my uh, uh, YouTube page, you'll realize that most of my teaching is based on you discovering your purpose. My ministry, the name of my ministry is walking into destiny. When God birthed this thing on the inside of me, I did not know then that it was my ministry. But this is a passion that I have. I want people to discover their destiny. I want people to discover their calling. Because I believe now uh, uh, that your gift will make room for, for you. I, man, if, if, if your gift is doing makeup, guess what? Makeup can help you make money. Your, your, your wealth is right in your hands. It's right in your hands. If you like to build things, man, come on, man. Go ahead and build stuff. You have some people that can build cabinets. You have some people that can fish. You want people, I mean, come on, man. The wealth is in your hand. And then you want to sit down there and say, you don't know what your purpose is? Man, go in the sea, go fishing. Get a truckload of fish. Go sell them. Make a couple thousands of dollars. <laughs> so that is my purpose. I want to, to, to help people to recognize their uh, purpose because every one of us have a purpose. God knew you even before he formed you, formed you in the womb of your mother. So he knew you. He knows every strand of hair on your head. So if you want to know what your destiny is, you want to know what your purpose is, you got to go back to the manual. Amen. You got to go back and, uh, um, to the manual. Amen. You got to stay in com constant com communication with the creator in order to find out what is his plan for the creation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope that this helps somebody today. Amen. I had no intentions of staying on this long, but I hope that this helps somebody today. Amen. And if you didn't catch the beginning of this, go back and replay it and, and, and listen to the beginning of this. Amen. Amen. So we get to the point now as believers, we always believe in somebody out to get us. We always believe in that, you know, somebody is our enemy. We talk about hater blockers and all these things so much that we don't even realize that God placed people in our lives as real companions, real friends, our real motivators. Amen. And we have to appreciate these people. Amen. Corinne, you love to cook. Man, I love to cook too. I love to cook. There's one time ago when I used to be at this same position right now where I did not know what God called me to do. And then you'll find that people, because I am a multi-talented person, I can do several things. I, learn, I taught myself how to sew. I can cook. Um, I can write. Um, um, there's several things I can do. So for the longest, I did not know what God was calling me to do. I did not know what my purpose was. And I used to look at my big sister and I was like, well, you could do nails. And I used to look at my little sister and I'm like, well, you could do hair. What am I good at? And I always used to say it. And they always used to laugh at me because I never knew what God called me to do. I did not know because I could have cooked. I could have do this and I could have do that. And, I, and it sort of confused me because I was good at so much things that I did not know which one I was supposed to be doing. <laughs> blessings, Dean of the Blessings. I was so good at so I was good at certain so much things that I didn't know what God called me to do. And I'm a person I'm a person like I could start one thing, never finish it, move on to the next things, never finish it, move on to something else and never finish it. So I had to pray to God uh, 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 to get that to get rid of that because I, I could start writing a book and never finish it. <laughs> Have a good um, story. Good story, good plot, good plan, good everything, body, everything, but never follow through. So I had to pray for that. I had to ask God to, 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 you know, help me to complete things, help me to complete projects. 
Amen. I had to pray and ask God to help me to complete projects, help me to complete what I start, help me to finish what I start. Amen. So, so, so people of God, uh, in order for you to uh, walk into your purpose or discover your calling, these are some of the steps that you take that will lead you closer to your purpose. Amen. That will lead you closer to your purpose. So I hope that um, by the time you leave this uh, broadcast this afternoon, you are a little bit, uh, a little bit more aware of how to go about walking into your destiny, how to go about discovering your purpose and your calling. Amen. There's one more thing that I wanted to read in your hearing before I go. Let me also add that as you are climbing up, reach down to assist those that are not as far along as you. Amen. Uh, reach those to us, uh, reach down and assist those that are not, not as far along as you. Amen. It is so important to help build the next up and coming generation. And we should pray and hope to bring and hope to bring them up further than we are. Amen. Let me read that for you one more time. Let me also add that as you are climbing up, as you are climbing up, reach down to assist those that are not far along as you. Amen. It is so important for us to help build up the next up and coming generation as we should and we should pray and hope to bring them up further than we are. Amen. It is good for us now as we are climbing up this ladder of uh, uh, success, as we are climbing up this ladder in ministry, as we are going up this uh, 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 mountain. It is always good for us now to help climb or to help those that are climbing up be uh, behind us. We should uh, always look to assist them. Amen. Always lend a helping hand to somebody that is a little bit, let me don't say lower, but somebody that is coming up right behind you. It is always good to lend a helping hand to assist a person up that mountain too also amen i hope that made sense to you and we should always pray we should always pray and hope that 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 that, that to bring up the and um, bring them up further than we are amen it's just like our, our mother or a parent uh some parent they may not have went to college but their aspiration is for their children to go to college Amen. A good father and a good mother, a good mentor always aspire for their mentee, for their children to be better than them. Amen. To achieve more than them. Amen. Guess what? A true teacher knows. A true teacher knows. And I, I believe Dr. Miles Monroe um, 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 said this. A true leader and a true teacher knows that they will never truly die if they pass the knowledge on. Amen. Everything that you know and you pass it on to somebody else, you never truly die. So Miles Monroe is living on in the minds and in the hearts of so many people, even in my mind, even in my writing. Miles Monroe is living in that. Why? Because of the things that he taught, because of the things that he released, because he released the knowledge, because he released the revelation. Guess what? He will never die. Amen. So for you to, to, to become a, 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 a great leader, for you to walk in true purpose and in calling, it, it, for you to walk in true purpose and calling, guess what? You have to help somebody else up. Amen? Help somebody else up and try for them to reach further than you. Don't get jealous when, when, when somebody else start prophesying. Man, go ahead, support them. Somebody else start prophesying, you're a prophet, and somebody else start prophesying. Come on, man. Help that person. Cheer that person on. Support them. Why? Because you should always want somebody else to aspire or you should always want somebody who coming up behind you to go further than you. When Elijah was, um, 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 when Elijah was, 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 was getting ready to depart the earth, he asked his mentee, what do you want? And guess what Elijah said to him? He, she, he said that I want your mantle a double portion. And he said, guess what? If you see this thing, when it drop, it's yours. That's what we're not doing that in the body of Christ anymore. It's not happening anymore. You have too much jealousy. You have too much fighting uh, in the body of Christ anymore. You have mothers don't want to be mothers in the, in, in the, in the church anymore. Fathers don't want to be fathers anymore. Uh, uh, they, they, they don't want to mentor the young ones. They don't want to help uh, 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 bring them up. And it's creating a confusion. It's creating a rift in the church. That the world could see. So now they're calling us hypocrites. Amen. 
they calling us hypocrites. We mix up. We don't know what we're doing inside there. We mix up because we're fighting uh, amongst ourselves. We're fighting each other. The senior prophet can't teach the new up-and-coming prophet what to do, how to go about it. The, 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 the mother in the church can't teach the young girl how to dress properly. The, the, the father in the church can't father the young boys, tell them to stop sleeping with all the little girls in the church. It, it, I mean, it's just crazy in the church. It's just crazy. We get to a point now where there's no fathership, there's no mothership in the church. There's no mentorship in church. The Black Labs, Crab Central, that's right. Everybody pulling everybody down. Nobody want to see anybody else go further. Nobody want to see anybody else further. But in order for you to walk into true purpose and, to, and to, for you to walk into your true calling, you have to get to the place where you understand that God placed something on the inside of you and the reason why he placed it on the inside of you is for you to give it. The reason why God bless you is for you to be a blessing to somebody else. Amen? Blessings, Carolyn. So people of God, I hope that this was a blessing to you. If you have any questions, I could take one or two questions before I go. I could um, try to answer your questions before I go. If you have any questions on, on your calling, if you have any questions on where, uh, 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 what part of the body God is calling you to, if you have any questions, go ahead, um, um, type your questions. Uh, I'll take a few questions before I come off the line. Amen. Let me see how best I could uh, uh, clarify some things. If there's any things that I said um, that is not clear to you, um, go ahead, ask your question. Let me know. Amen. Let me know. Amen. Let me know. Amen. Because then we get to the point where I get to a point where I get so deep in the teaching sometimes that I can't read all of the comments. And then only when I go back and read it, then I see some of your comments. And then by then, it's a little bit too late to address it. So I prefer to address it while you are here on the line. So not only you get the understanding or the revelation of it, but other people will get the revelation of it also. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you have any questions on purpose, if you have any question on your destiny, if you have any questions reference to your calling, uh, let me know. Amen. Just let me know. I wanted to read a scripture in your hearing that I didn't get to read. I wanted to read it um, while you are coming up with your questions or your comments. I think I might sign off and come back on. Because something that I wanted to do, I wanted to do an open mic. I wanted to do an open mic where, what happened? The thing fall off. I eh? the thing for the computer fall out. I wanted to do an open mic where I come on and we have some discussions. And I invite people to come on in. And to comment or to speak on some things that the uh, Spirit of the Lord may have been saying to them. Amen. Whatever it is that the Lord has been saying to you. Um, uh, and you just want to say it or you want to release it. Um, I, I wanted to do something like an open mic where um, we give everybody like about two minutes to come on in and just say. Uh, it's just like testimony. You all remember testimony like back in the day? When you used to um, 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 go in front of the church, you hold the mic and, and they give you a couple of minutes. Oh, mom and them used to run out sometimes because they wanted to sing a song, testify, and then sing another song. <laughs> but yeah, it's something like testimony. If you have something that you need to say, something that you need to release, I think I may come back on. Let me, let me, let me just pray, for, pray about it for about a minute or two and I may come back on to do an open mic. Amen. So if you are interested in that, let me know if you're interested in the open mic where you can come on and you can say whatever it is that the Lord has been saying to you. Amen. So if you are interested in the open mic, um, let me know that you're interested in the open mic. Amen. Um, or, or you can even inbox me and let me know that you're interested. If I have about five people that said that they're interested in the open mic, um, I'll come back and we'll do an open mic. Amen. Yes, it, it, yes, um, Leticia, it's like testimonies. I love testimonies, amen? So it's like a testimony. If there's anything that you want to share, if it's anything that um, uh, we've been saying, anything that we've been praying for, or anything, anything that, um, 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 even if it's a prophecy that has been fulfilled, anything that you want to say, go ahead, let me know. And then when I come back on in a few minutes, um, probably in another say, what time it is now, people? 
probably when I come back on, probably around 8, 8 p.m., we can do an open mic where I invite you to come on in and you can just share. Amen. It could be just even a prayer or it could just be just a testimony or it could be just a comment or it could be something. Woman of God, you prophesied something into my life and this is what happened. Or woman of God, you pray for somebody in my family and this is what happened. Or woman of God, you know, anything, 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 anything. So if, if there is no question, I will be going now. <laughs> I will be going My um, monitor thingy fall out. I wanted to read a scripture in your hearing before we go. I guess I have to go the old-fashioned way and read it from my Bible instead of the computer. But before I go, let me just read the scripture in your hearing. If you are interested in the um, 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 open mic, just type open mic um, on the screen. Type open mic on the screen if you would be interested in that. I wanted to read um, um, the scripture to you. It is... um. It is um, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12, is it verses 12 I wanted to read from? Yes, it's Corinthians 12, chapter 12, I think I wanted to read 12 and 13. Well, we'll see, uh, um, let me read this in your hearing, amen? It says, uh, just as a body, though one has many parts, but all is but all its many parts for one body so it is with christ amen for we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body whether jews or gentiles slaves free and we were all given the one give, given one spirit to drink amen even in this verse 14 says even so the body is not made up of one part but of many amen but i wanted to read it off my computer because my computer had a different version you asked the question dina i didn't see it i didn't see it let me scroll back up Oh, okay, okay. Good question, Dana. That is a great, great question. Forgiveness is never easy. I know people usually say, just forgive, just forgive, but forgiveness is a process. Amen? Forgiveness is a process. I, too, experienced church hurt, and it was from a pastor, and it is not... Okay, you interested in open mic? Okay. Um, I, too, was um, hurt by a pastor. It is not easy. It is a process. But what I would recommend you to do from my experience and from what I did is I ask God to take away the hurt, number one. I ask God to take away the hurt and I ask God to take away the resentment. Because yes, mm -hmm, Christian, there was a resentment and there was a hate that started to build up. And, and then the hate started to grow into, uh, how do I put it? We're to the point where isolation, it grew into isolation, Dana, to the point where I didn't want to go to church anymore. I didn't want to be a part of church anymore. I didn't want to be a part of anything in ministry anymore. I, as a matter of fact, I didn't want to do anything Christian anymore. Amen. I just wanted to go to church, be in the back, sit down, get the word and go home. So, 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 so for me, I understand what you're saying, but it is a process. What you need to start doing is, ah, 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 people usually say, Oh, just forgive. It's not that easy. Amen? It's not that easy. So it is a process. What you need to do now is you need to uh, 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 pray strategically. You need to start asking God now to take away the hurt. Because if the hurt's still there, you're still you're not going to forgive. Amen? If the hurt is still there, you're not going to forgive. So you need to ask God to uh, 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 help take away the hurt. Amen? After you've done that, then you need to start targeting the resentment. God, take away the resentment. Amen? Take away the resentment. Help me not to isolate myself from the body. Amen? Help me not to isolate myself from the body. So first of all, you want to say, God, uh, take away the hurt. Take away the resentment and help me not to isolate myself from the body. And then the last thing you want to say is, God, help me to forgive the person that hurt me. My God, it is a process. So you pray this prayer. 
Amen. You pray the prayer until you get to the point and you want to know when you start to forgive, when you can see this person and you feel absolutely nothing. Amen. When you can see that person and you feel absolutely nothing, then you know that your prayer is actually manifesting. Then you know your prayer is actually taking root, but it is a process. It's not going to happen overnight, you know. It's not going to happen overnight. So, so, so your prayer now, uh, uh, oh God, girl, you just knocked the wind right out of me. Listen, listen, you, you, girl, you must be reading from my book. Listen, it is not an easy thing. It is a process. That is the reason why, thank God, thank, I thank God for the Holy Spirit. I thank God for the Holy Spirit that empowers and enlightens. It is a process, Dana. You have to ask God to deal with the hurt. If you can't deal with the hurt, it don't make no sense because you won't be able to forgive. Hello, Raphael. You got to ask God to deal with the hurt because the hurt, it permeates itself in you. Wow. Wow, Dina. Guess what? The mere fact that you are talking about it, that, that, that is the step to, 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 to healing right there. That is a step to healing right there. Guess what? We're talking about breaking stronghold. You just start to break your stronghold right then and there. You just begin the process of breaking the stronghold right now, today, tonight. Hallelujah. You just begin the process of breaking that stronghold. Hallelujah. But guess what? What you have to do now? You have to ask God to uh uh you have to ask God now to take away the hurt. As long as you hurt, you won't forgive. My God. As long as you hurt dinner, you won't forgive. I'm telling you from experience. As long as the pain is there, you won't forgive. So you got to ask God now to search you within your heart and to take away every pain, to take away every hurt, to take away every spirit of resentment, to take away all of these things. And guess now you got to take, ask God to take away the spirit of fear because all of these things now create the spirit of fear. And when you, once it creates the spirit of fear, you know what you do. You start to close up yourself. You fear this. You fear that. You fear going to church. You fear trusting people. You fear I'm, I'm, I'm trusting another pastor. You fear trusting. You just fear. You in complete fear. And guess what that is? It's bondage. So what the enemy plan is, the enemy plan is now to keep you in fear and to keep you in bondage. Once he have you isolated or once he have you to a place now where you're in a corner and you're not seeking solutions or you're not talking about it or you don't forgive. He has you in this corner now and you stand in this corner with your fist ball up and you're ready to throw a blow at anybody that come at you. But you're not understanding now that this fight is not a physical fight. It is a spiritual fight. My God, my God, I hear in the spirit of the Lord saying that this message was for you tonight. Do you know? I hear in the spirit of the Lord saying that this message was for you tonight. Hallelujah. Because uh, 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 you on your way to discovering your purpose and your calling in God. But the enemy used that to sidetrack to side you in order for you not to reach your purpose. My God, my God. I cancel every plan of the enemy to sidetrack you. I cancel every plan of the enemy to detour you. I cancel every plan of the enemy to take you off your course. I cancel every plan of the enemy to take you off your path to purpose now in the name of Jesus. I cancel it right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that this message was for you tonight. Because there is something that he's placed on the inside of you that the enemy tried to steal. And that is the way that the enemy tried to shut you up. My God, my God. The enemy tried to shut you up. Hallelujah. 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 I'm hearing the spirit of the Lord say, as you release it, I will heal your heart. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, Dina, as you release it, but you got to release it, Dina. You got to release it. I'm not telling you that it's easy. There's going to be days that you cry. As a matter of fact, there's going to be days that you want to hold on to the hurt because it's so comfortable to, for, for you now. It is your comfort zone. You get so used to the hurt now that to make this, to, 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 to try to pull away from the hurt now is going to hurt you more. To separate from the penis 
is going to hurt you more. But I hear the spirit of the Lord say, let it go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It hurts more to, 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 to separate from it. But I hear the spirit of the Lord say, let it go. For some of us now, uh, uh, we've been asking God for a breakthrough. We've been asking God to deliver us. We've been asking God for so much things. But guess what now? We in covenant with these people. We in covenant with demons. We in covenant with spiritual husbands. We in covenant with soul ties. So therefore now God's hand is tied behind his back. Why? Because you in covenant with somebody else. God is a gentleman. He is not going to ramshack and break down a covenant that you have with somebody else in order to free you. I'm so sorry. So for some of us, we got to break these soul ties. We got to break the hurt. We got to break ourselves out of certain things. Why? Because the longer you stay in covenant with somebody else or with something else or with other demonic forces, God is not going to force himself on you. So you got to release the hurt in order for God to mend the hurt. Mend your heart. My God, my God. It sounds easy, but I know it ain't easy, Dino. You know? You can cry some nights. You can cry some nights, but you got to separate yourself from the pain. You got to separate yourself from the pain. You got to put some distance between you and the pain. Amen. You got to put some distance between you and the pain. If you allow the pain to stay on the inside of you, it will consume your heart. It will consume your heart. Next thing you know, you end up with gallstones and you end up with cancer and you end up with all kind of stuff. And you're trying to figure out God, why this and God, why that? It's because you never forgive. It's because you never release the hurt. So in order for you to forgive the persons that hurt you, you got to release the hurt. Guess what? I want to tell you today, and this might be a, sh a shocker. It ain't even about the person. Woo! It ain't even about the person. It ain't even about the person, they know. It's about you. It ain't even about the person. Forget the person for one minute. It ain't even about the person. My God, my God. It ain't even about the person. It's you holding on to the hurt. God say, release the hurt. Separate yourself from the hurt. And allow me to mend your heart. Guess what? Begin to let it go. Pray that prayer tonight. Pray it tomorrow night. Pray the night after night, after that. And you realize now that before you know it, the hurt starts to go. The resentment starts to go. It starts to go. And before you know it, now you could just walk and you could see this person and you, you, your mind could run across this person. You'd be like, yeah, uh-huh. That was a thing in the past. But it, it, it ain't about the person, it's about you. The enemy tried to shut you up with that. The enemy tried to shut you up. Why? Because you have purpose on your life. Why? Because you have purpose on your life. It ain't even about the person. My God, my God. God does some serious things. It ain't even about the person. You hear people usually say forgiveness ain't for the person, but it's for you. That is true in your case. It ain't for that person. It's for you. I hear God says, once you release the hurt, I will mend your heart and you will watch. My God, you will watch. <laughs> uh, there's some things I want to say to you, but I prefer to say it to you in private. You will watch some stuff start to happen. As long as you hold on to the heart, to, to the hate, ain't nothing happening to that person. Ain't nothing can happen to them. But the minute you release that, watch God. Watch how God can move in their life. Watch, watch, watch their life after you release the hurt. Watch their life after you release the hurt. Ain't even about them, it's about you. You got to release it. Amen? You got to release it, Dana. So forgiveness is a process, honey. It's a process. It's not going to happen overnight. I'm not going to stand up here and I'm not going to sit here before you and, and be like some pastors and be like some people and let you know, oh, just forgive and uh, breathing all heart and heart and speaking in tongues and then afterwards you go home and you're still hurting. No, honey. It's a process. You might still hate the person tomorrow. You might still hate them day after tomorrow. It's a process. We are human. It's a process. So what you need to do now, pray for God to take away the hurt. Pray for God to take away the, 
uh, uh, take away the hurt and what you need to start doing now is asking God now to take away the isolation take away the fear because all the devil tried to do because of that situation he put you in fear and you were in bondage you've been in bondage now for years it's time to release you are free now in the name of Jesus that stronghold is broken now in the name of Jesus. That spirit of depression is broken now in the name of Jesus. That spirit of fear is broken now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, somebody come on and praise God with me. Deliverance is taking place right in front of your eyes and y'all can't even celebrate. Man, come on. Somebody begin to celebrate for me and for her. Deliverance is taking place right here. People of God, I'm supposed to be coming to Grand Bahama uh, 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 for a three-night revival. And the theme of this revival is breaking strongholds. Breaking strongholds. And guess what? This is the thing that God has been putting in my spirit now for the past couple of uh, weeks. Breaking strongholds. This is my mission. Deliverance is taking place right in front of your eyes right now. Hallelujah. Good night, Nelson Boros. Hallelujah. Deliverance is taking place even now. God is about to mend you, Dana. God is about to mend you. Release it all. Release it all. Release it. Release it. Release it. Release it. And he is going to mend your heart. Amen. It is a process. It hurts. But guess what? Uh, 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 the rewards. Hallelujah. The reward. Can far exceed whatever it is that you have right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God is breaking strongholds even now. Hallelujah. This has been my prayer. This is why I stay up in the middle of the night. This is why I can't sleep till 5 a.m. in the morning because God was birthing this thing on the inside of me. I up 3 o'clock in the morning. I up 4 o'clock in the morning. I trying to figure out why I can't sleep. It's because God, this thing that I had to give birth to, God is breaking some strongholds. Some people was molested. Some people was raped. Some people was abused. Some people was hurt. Some people are under the spirit of depression. Some people dealing with some ancestral curse. Some people dealing with some uh, demonic forces. Some people are married to spiritual brides and spiritual wives and spiritual husbands. Guess what? There are some people, they can't get married. They can't keep a business. They can't do nothing. They're not successful. Why? Because of strongholds. I, I, we are breaking these. I end up in the hospital with the enemy fighting me against my body. Uh, why? Because I had to give birth to this thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Tina. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah, Father, I thank you for deliverance on this line today. And I ask, oh God, that you begin to touch Dina right in her heart, Father God. I pray, oh God, that you will change her mentality, that you will change her mindset, Father God, that you, Father God, will plead the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, Father God, in her heart, Father God. Begin to mend her heart, Father God. Begin to mend every broken place, Father God. Father, I pray against the spirit of depression. I pray against the spirit of suicide. I pray against the negative thoughts, oh God. I pray against the spirit of fair right now it is broken now in the name of jesus hallelujah 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 jesus i thank you hallelujah father i thank you for doing a new thing i thank you for doing a new thing eyes have not seen ears have not heard hallelujah Hallelujah, Father, I magnify you tonight. I give you the praise and I give you all of the glory tonight. It is broken in the name of Jesus. Every stronghold is broken in the name of Jesus. This one thing. Hallelujah. This was like an altar and the altar was uh, uh, dictating to your future. I curse that demonic altar right now. I shatter it now in the name of Jesus. I call upon the fire of heaven right now to shatter, to eradicate, to burn up that altar right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And every demonic force and every demonic demon, every demonic activity that was um, speaking and dictating to your future, I shut it down now in the name of Jesus. I send the fire of God. I send the wrath of God to that altar right now. I send the wrath of God to every demonic force that was coming from that altar to be shut down right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every stronghold. Every stronghold is broken now. Every stronghold is broken now in the name of Jesus. Shout out about Jesus. Every stronghold is broken now. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody come on and give God praise with me. Ah, thank you, Raphael. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. It is broken. Tina, it is broken. It is broken. You're going to testify. You're going to testify. You can sleep like a baby tonight. <laughs> you can sleep like a baby tonight, Dina. <laughs> People of God, I just realized I got to go to work tonight. <laughs> I got to go to work tonight. I don't know if I can be able to do open mic tonight. That might be tomorrow night. Hallelujah. 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 I'm excited about your future, Dina. I'm excited about your future. People of God, I'm excited about your future. God is about to do some things. God is about to move some mountains. God is about to make some things come true in your life. God is about to, my man, guess what? This is the season where you will just look at things and be like, wow, this is this mind-blowing season. This is a mind-blowing season. Amen. God is going to do some things in your life. And all you could say, it only could have been God. It only could have been God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Stacy, broken. Hallelujah. It is broken. It is broken. It is broken. Glory be to the name of God. Hallelujah. It is broken. It is broken. Somebody help me celebrate. Somebody help me celebrate. Somebody help me give God praise. Somebody help me magnify the Lord. Somebody help me to, 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 to magnify the Lord for what he has done. Somebody help me to magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Right here on Facebook. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Father, I magnify your holy name. I magnify your holy name. Father, I pray right now that as your people leave this broadcast, Father God, but never your presence, <laughs> that you will, Father God, protect them, that you will lead them, that you will guide them, Father God, in all things. I pray against every spirit of backlash. I pray against retaliation right now in the name of Jesus. I cover them right now with the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, Father. I pray against every demonic force. I pray against every uh, demonic force uh, speaking to their future and to their destiny, Father God. I cancel every plan of the enemy right now to ruin their future and to ruin their purpose. I cancel every spirit, Father God, to detour them, to sidetrack them, uh, to delay them, to set them back in their purpose, Father God. I cancel it right now mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Every plan of the enemy, oh God, to take them away from their destiny, to take them away from their true calling, I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I send your wrath. I send the fire of the Holy Spirit right now to every demon, to every force that has been working against them right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit to confuse them, every spirit to sidetrack them and take them off of their path. I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. I speak, Father, right now restoration to their mind. I speak restoration, Father God, to their body. I speak restoration to their plans, Father God. Even to those, Father God, that, that began their work and did not complete it. I speak completion right now in the name of Jesus. Let everything that they touch, Father God, turn into gold. Let everything that they touch begin to be blessed now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that everything that they touch, Father God, will be multiplied now in the name of Jesus. Father, I give you the praise. I give you the glory. I give you the honor. Not only for what you have done tonight, but for what you are about to do, O oh God. I thank you, O oh God, for repairing I thank you for restoring, oh God. I thank you for replenishing right now in the name of Jesus. Everything that the canker worm has stolen, everything that the enemy has stolen, Father God, I say right now in the name of Jesus, it will be restored and returned now in the name of Jesus. Everything that was stolen by the enemy, Father God, shall be returned sevenfold now in the name of Jesus, according to your word, oh God, that if the thief be found, Father God, that he shall return sevenfold 
that which he has stolen. So we have discovered, we have found the thief tonight, Father God. And we say today, Father God, we command right now by the spirit of the living God uh, for the enemy to return everything sevenfold that which he has stolen from the people of God. Everything that the canker worm and the palmer worm has eaten, Father God. Everything that the locusts have stolen and eaten, Father God. We say today, Father God, it shall be returned double, Father, in the name of Jesus. Everything that they went through, Father God, as in your word, Father God, as you did for your servant, Job, Father God, give them double for their trouble now in the name of Jesus. Give them double for their heartache, Father God. Give them double for the pain, Father God. Give them double for the process, Father God. Give them double for the hurt, Father God. Give them double for the disappointment, oh God. Give them double, Father God, for everything they went through, Father God, that was painful, oh God. It was the resentment, Father God, for the jealousy, Father God, double now in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we give you praise. We magnify you. We glorify you today, God. We give you all of the honor. We are careful to give you all of the praise, oh God. Mm-hmm. We magnify you, oh God. We glorify your name today, Father God. And I say, Father God, everyone that is on this line tonight, Father God, that is not well in their body, Father God, I pray that you may touch them, Father God, in every area of their lives that is not functioning. I call every artery to function right now in the name of Jesus. I call every artery to alignment right now in the name of Jesus. Every uh, blood vessel, Father God, to line up now in the name of Jesus. Every back pain, Father God, every migraine headache are canceled right now in the name of Jesus. Everything that is not functioning, Father God, the way that it should, I call it a divine alignment right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, every pain, every ache, Father God, I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. I speak divine health right now in the name of Jesus. Those that are experiencing stomach pain, Father God, I cancel every plan of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus and I speak healing father in the name of Jesus I speak healing on this line tonight in the name of Jesus I speak a healing in this line tonight on this line tonight in the name of Jesus father we magnify your holy name we glorify your holy name oh God for those of you that are praying for finances I speak wealth into your hands now in the name of Jesus I speak wealth into your hands now in the name of Jesus father I pray oh God that you begin to bless Bless them, O God, that you will open up the storehouse of heaven, O God, that you begin to pour out a blessing, O God, that they do not have room to contain, O God, in the name of your son, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor, O God. Father, we thank you for what you have done and what you are about to do. We thank you, O God, today that you are sending your angels, O God, to fight on our behalf, O God, that you are sending your angels, O God, to fight on our behalf. Everything that was stolen, Father God, we thank you that is being replaced right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we glorify you. Even the years that have been stolen, Father, I pray, oh God, that you will restore to them, Father. Even the years that have been stolen in the name of Jesus, I pray again that you will restore their youth, oh God, in the name of Jesus. That you restore them with joy, oh God. That you restore peace, oh God. That you restore unity, oh God. That you restore love now in the name of Jesus. Even between family members, oh God. Even in the marriages, O oh God. Return unity, O oh God. Return peace, joy, and love, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Father, I come against every spirit of fear right now. I come against every spirit of bondage right now, O oh God. But you said in your word, O oh God, that you did not give us the spirit of fear, O oh God, but of love and of a sound mind, O oh God. So we speak today, O oh God. I decree and I declare, O oh God, that we have a sound mind today, O oh God. That we have a sound mind today, O oh God. A, a renewed and sound mind today in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise today. We magnify your holy name today, God. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we glorify you. We magnify you today. We thank you for your blood, O oh God. Cover everyone that is under the, 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 the sound of my voice today, O oh God. I cover them in the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. I cover everything that comes from them. I cover their children. I cover their seed. I cover their vehicles. I cover their homes. I cover their apartments. I cover their jobs. I cover them uh, wherever they go right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor for everything that you have done and everything that you are about to do. Father, we glorify you. We magnify you. Blessings to all of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Blessings to all of you. I'm going to go now because I need to get some rest for work tonight. I didn't even forget. I already forget that I had to go to work tonight. But blessings for um, um, to all of you. Uh, 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 continue to pray for me as I pray for you. Continue to pray for me as I continue to pray for you. Amen. Continue to keep me in your prayers as I go into uh, uh, what God has me for do. Even when it comes into the revival, it has been a fight. It has been a fight, but continue to pray for me, uh, even for revival, amen, even for revival, because God is birthing revival in this season, amen, God is birthing revival in this season, and revival comes through prayer, <laughs> revival is birthed through prayer. <laughs> so we have to spend time with God so people of God thank you for coming on in I've been on this long enough thank you for staying with me I mean y'all some <laughs> y'all some faithful people y'all stay on this how long I've been on this how long I've been on this thing here I can't even see somebody tell me how long I've been on this but you stayed uh, um, on the line you received your word and guess what uh, uh, we receive deliverance on this line. We receive um, 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 healing on this line tonight. We receive wealth on this line tonight. And guess what? Knowledge like no other. Amen. Knowledge like no other. Nobody can take it away from you once you get it. Amen. So we thank God for knowledge tonight. So as you go forth in your purpose, as you go forth in your calling, I pray that the Lord continue to bless you and in, in everything that you do. Amen. Blessings to all of you. Good night to everybody. Thank God. Um, thank God for you. I thank you for sharing the broadcast. Those of you that have not shared it as yet, go ahead and share it. Somebody's going to be blessed by it. Amen. Somebody's going to be blessed, blessed by it. And if you are watching the rebroadcast, guess what? The prayer still applies. Amen. The blood of Jesus still applies. There's no distance in prayer. Amen. There's no time in prayer. There's no distance in prayer. So it still applies. Amen. <laughs> Just open up your hands, open up your heart, and receive. Uh, for those of you that are, are not for um 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 not ha have not yet some um, subscribed to my YouTube page, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube page. Every video that we do, every prayer, everything that we do here at uh, on um, the live feed is downloaded to the YouTube page. So you can always go back, you can watch the videos on YouTube. Go ahead, share the YouTube page. Man, you all is share TD Jigs them, you all is share um Joel Osteen them stuff. I oh, mean, you all behemoth people right here. You all behemoth people right here. Share, share our stuff too, please. Share our stuff too. You are some anointed people right here in the Bahamas. Right here in the Bahamas. So share that stuff too. So blessings to all of you. Go ahead on the YouTube page. Subscribe and like it. Share it. And um, um leave some comments. I, I know it's people all around the world. I'm telling you, people from Minnesota, people from Minneapolis, um, um comment on the page, you know. So go ahead, leave a comment. Let me know um if it's, if something that I said or something that was said was a blessing to you. So go ahead and subscribe to the page. Uh don't forget to like the official pray page, Prophetess Marva Lewis. That's the page that I make um most of the ministry announcements on amen so blessings to all of you i'm going to go ahead and uh rest up for work tonight so blessings to all of you thanks for coming on in thank you for sharing blessings love you for watching